Good morning, Thermodynamics. Today we have a lot to talk about. I'm going to split it into different videos, but here we are. First video, we are going to focus on other things we can do with our favorite concept of thermodynamics activity. And so uh, let's dive in. So let's do a brief little recap of this concept of osmotic pressure. So just imagine, this is a great fun thing to imagine, we have a fish tank and there's a membrane down the middle of the fish tank and water can go through that membrane but other stuff can't. And so uh, let's do a few situations. So imagine you had this situation just to start with. It's pure water on both sides and uh, we just uh, have it much higher on one side than the other. And so you know there would be what we'd call a driving force to move from this right-hand side to the left-hand side, um, and it would be kind of hydrostatic pressure, right? Rho GH is uh, what we'd have there. You can remember that from fluids. And what would happen over time is our water as a result of this driving force, would equalize left side to the right side, correct? All right, good. So we agree that that's true. Uh, now let's, let's do it again. Sorry, it got skinnier. We still have a membrane that only lets water through. Uh, but this time, we have just the same quantity of water on, on both sides. But now... Uh, I've put some sodium chloride on the one side, but not the other. Now, what happens? Well, that means over here on the left-hand side, we have the water activity is less than one, uh, whereas on the right-hand side, the water activity, since it's pure water, is still one. And uh, at equilibrium... Just like for phase equilibrium, um, at equilibrium, uh, the activity has got to equal the activity on both sides. And so any system will move, will change to get to that state, right? So if you have, uh, since activity here is higher on the right-hand side, so this is higher, and this is lower, so that the water will bulk move, move from high to low. So we'll have water flowing from the left to the right, and you will eventually end up, over time, Therefore, since only water can move, no salt can move, with a height difference between the left and the right-hand side. And as we reminded ourselves just a second ago, the height difference, rho GH, uh, that's a pressure difference. And so that pressure difference, so I'm going to move over here. And we call that, uh, oops, spelling, osmotic pressure. And the symbol for that is capital pi, which looks just like regular pi, except it's big, but unless it's sitting next to regular pi, you can't tell. Okay, so um, the other interesting thing about this osmotic pressure, which is what develops over time as the this flow happens, is it is then the pressure that you would have to push on that left-hand side to keep uh, the water out that's trying to move in from the right. So we can think of it either as this, this height difference that eventually develops, or we can think of it as uh, almost sort of piston cylinder, how much you'd have to push down to keep the water from flowing. Either of those thoughts works. So to restate that clearly for the people who are reading this as PDFs, um, this is our situation. We have uh, water moves from, and in fact, anything uh, 
It'll move from high to low until activity equals activity. And, uh, you know, sure, this is uh, an experiment you can do if you have a spare fish tank lying around home and a um, semi-permeable membrane. Ha, huh? okay, maybe not. But um, this is the pressure that you would have to exert to keep the water from moving or the, or the pressure uh, as we normally characterize it hydrostatically. And if you don't have a semi-permeable membrane lying around at home, and that sounds like, like, what the heck is that? Um, just think about that uh, all of cells are surrounded by semi-permeable membranes. And so uh, they, this membrane that they've got, is uh, what is, uh, must un uh, withstand the pressure uh, from <clears throat> the fact that its concentration inside and the concentration of solutes outside might be a little bit different. Um, another place this shows up uh, is water purification from salt water. But, but going back to the cells, um, you will see in a second, this is what uh, makes that food safety calculation you just did work. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to actually calculate this. So we could calculate uh, it from doing the experiment and actually working out uh, a pressure. Uh, however, that experiment's kind of hard to do, and we'd rather calculate. Now, there are some assumptions baked into this. I invite you to go look at the book to see what they are. Uh, but this, in general, works. So this is... Um, so this is osmotic pressure, and that's units of pressure. Um, and it's supposed to be a capital pi. I'll try and make it look different as we need to. Uh, R and T, uh, T has got to be absolute. And this is a molar volume over here. Um, and this is assumed for... Uh, obviously, water is what we are looking at here. And look, here's our friend, water activity. So you'll note, uh, this calculation is actually what underlies all of the food safety stuff. Uh, but um, it's better not to have, or it's just easy if we don't have to go through all of this math um, and we've just set up things in terms of AW. Now, something that's really convenient, or important, sorry, not convenient, important, um, is because the water activity is lying inside a natural log, uh, little changes are quite significant. And so the fact that, you know, something is 0.99 versus 0.999 may give you uh, the different answers that you are looking for. So, all of that being said, let's solve an example problem. Yay! So, here you go. Your task, make normal saline, uh, which I'll explain what that is in just a second. Um, and the osmotic pressure uh, of human red blood cells is uh, 0. 0.8. 83 megapascals. So your uh, so normal saline, backing up what that is, is uh, if you're ever dehydrated, um, they'll hook you up to a drip. Uh, or in fact, if they want to put medicine um, in a person, uh, they hook you up to an IV drip, and that IV. Uh, usually has some medicine in it, but it's got to have some carrying fluid uh, to let it mix in. That's normal saline. And so uh, <clears throat> it's useful stuff to have around. It also doesn't hurt if you, like, get it in your eyes. It doesn't sting like plain water or very, very salty water would. Um, it's good for cleaning off cuts. So let's say you're going to make some normal saline. No so normal in this sense is normal as in isotonic, as in uh, having a matched activity um, is what's going on here. And you're going to make it out of sodium chloride and water. Um, sodium chloride and water is not the only thing that's in, oh, RBC, red blood cells. 
And so the idea here is if you drop a, a human red blood cell into just straight up water, it pops. The uh, osmotic pressure difference between the inside and the outside, too big, uh, the cell uh, membrane can't take it. So we have to match it with normal saline. So your task, here is your problem that you get to solve. And this one is tricky, and it's tricky not because the equation here is tricky. It's tricky because, I'm going to write this in bright green, um, it is tricky because the unit conversion is a pain in the butt. So really, really, really watch your units on this. Okay? So you are going to work out how much salt you need to add to water um, so how many, whoops, grams, table salt to, and let's say we want to make, um, uh, a hundred mils of this stuff. How many grams to a hundred mils of water? And so that is your problem. I'm going to be quiet and let you work on that for a bit, um, but you should know there's lots of recipes for normal saline out on the web, and so you can easily check your answer. Uh, but uh, do the math first. Com uh, work out that it's right. Oh, other thing you got to know. Thing you got to remember here. Uh, remember, sodium chloride splits in two. I'm going to write it twice so you can all see it. Um, sodium and chloride. So we get two... Uh, particles for every uh, one mole equivalent of sodium chloride that you add. And that's important because what you're looking for here is to work out normality. So that, uh, that goes by the number of moles of dissolved items, dissolved uh, ions or molecules, not by the number of moles of stuff that you added. Okay? All right. Give this a shot, then tune in for uh, some other uh, content about activity. Bye-bye.